this day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's day. good? Red Panda Anthem. Ah. Your boy. Going up. Yeah. And people, I see some people asking, why is TSM so important? So important. Obviously, we said they control sixty percent of the semiconductors in the world. But listen to their customers. These are the customers, their clients, right? Their number one client is Apple. You might have heard of this company, right? The wealthiest American company right now. Twenty five percent of their revenue share comes from Apple. Uh, AMD is a, a client. Qualcomm is a client. Broadcom is a client. Nvidia is a client. Sony is a client. Intel is a client. And so we're talking about pretty much every aspect from cars to fridges <laughs> to your computers. All these things, your, your cameras, all these things that pretty much we use on an everyday basis that are part of our lives, yep. they're making <laughs> the technology so that th- those things can be functional. If that company is compromised, this is, this, is, this is a real global effect. And also, another thing that I'll say is that you run a tremendous risk by investing in individual stocks. This is the, this is the reality that nobody's going to tell you. I'm, it's extremely risky when you invest in individual stocks, especially if you are a novice or you're not an expert. And even if you are an expert, you run a lot of things are out of your control when you when you invest in individual stocks. This is why the index play is a good. This is why is the reason why like Warren that. Buffett and these guys say like individual investors should invest in index funds. They actually are trying to protect people from hurting themselves. Not to say that you can't make money from individual stocks. I never said that, but it is way more risk involved with individual stocks. If you want to be a little bit more riskier, you can do the ETFs, which gives you, you know, sector specific exposure. But when you start investing in individual stocks, you run the risk of things that are out of your control because things just happen. Like even we talked about like Facebook or you, you could be a, a, one of the strongest companies. Facebook's one of the strongest companies in the world. I think it's like fifth as far as their market cap. But they didn't meet um, their projections and they lost billions of dollars in market cap in one day and, and it dropped yep. almost like $100. So, I mean, yeah. It's not like that's yeah. just a, it's not like that's like a penny stock no. or just a stock. Like, you know, that's a company that's a strong company that we use every single day. That's one of the top 10 companies, one of the top five companies in the world. And Netflix, another company that mm-hmm. just fell off the, you don't see any strong index or any strong ETF moving that right, right direction. So I won't beat a dead horse because I understand that stocks are sexy and, you know, that's what, you know, people want to, you know, invest in and all of that. But just understand that when you invest in individual stocks, you run a tremendous risk of losing money. That is, it's just a historical fact. Yeah. You look at the data. Focus yeah, I mean, on the top two. Yeah. I mean, Microsoft's a great company, right? But when the economy is down, it, it's going to go way down with it. So it was at 349 at its peak or 359. Right now it's at 260. It's not that Microsoft didn't meet its earnings and it didn't have great future guidance. The economy's down. Yeah. <laughs> and I also say this too, like if you guys listen, like a lot of you are just getting your ass kicked because you didn't listen. Neo, no good. Palantir, no good. Rivian, no good. Lucian, no good. What other ones did you guys throw? Doge is dying. Gave a price for you guys to get in the net. Luna, Tether will be next. Like a lot of, inv- like, please write this in chat. If Ian gives me the picks and I make all the money, I'm the genius. Meaning you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like charge point, it was a bunch of them that people were throwing around, and I'm like, they have no revenue at all. Like honestly, some of the businesses you guys were investing in, we make more revenue there and higher net profit. Yeah. In a recession, focus and hunt. Go through two thousand companies to find four or five. And I pray we can get this video going tonight, Jen. I'm emailing to you as well. Um, if it doesn't work on my end, but I'm begging you to hunt for five quality companies that you will hold on to if your life depended on it. That's it. That's it. Let's let's get to these talking points. Um, what are three pieces of advice you you want uh, when building your 
Well, actually, let's let's take the business question. Let's talk about the um the portfolio since we're in investment. Um, what's the biggest mistake that you see people making when they show um you their their portfolios in person? It happens to me all the time. It happens <laughs> to Troy all the time. The I time. know it happens to you all the time. People walk yep. up to us and actually show us like this is what ha- Slim Thug did it. <laughs> this, this is what this is what I'm invested in. So what's the what's the biggest what's the biggest mistake that you see when people show you their Robinhood account when you see them in person? Number one, too many picks. The average person I see has 10 to 20 picks. You cannot do proper analysis on all of them. It's tough. Fellas, same thing if you're trying to date 10 to 20 women at one time. It sounds good on paper. And action and philosophy, terrible idea. Same outcome. Divorce, broke, unhappy, miserable, right? Number two, not having a thesis that you've tested. So I know for two tech, two index, if inflation gets to 15%, my motto is destroyed. I then have to go to my second bag of investing. So regardless of what you're investing in, I'm like, hey, why do you like this company? It's usually because somebody else told them and they don't know all the pros and cons of that company. And then number three, not put enough capital into the ones they believe in. So people will like spread, say you have 5,000, they'll put 100 here, 100 here, 200 here, 300 there. And then it falls apart. And it's like, you had two winners that you could have made 10 X on but you didn't heavily invest. So when you like minimize the number of companies that you're going to invest in, if you go go Google right now, the quote that Warren Buffett says about diversification, if you are truly diversified, you're doing it wrong. There's a class of information for people who don't know, who won't listen, who won't execute. And then there's the real set of information. You want to concentrate really heavy. So like when Coca-Cola was Warren Buffett's big position in the 90s, what percentage of his portfolio was it? And then if you go look at Apple right now, which is his number one position, how much of his portfolio does it hold? Like people don't put in enough into their winners. And I, and I try and tell you guys, they have one hoodie, one t-shirt. Why? That shit's working. That's Jordan. They could have made 19 other shirts like most companies do. That's how most fashion lines and merch lines fall off. They don't ride their winners long enough. So stay Minimize the number of stocks that you have. Know why you're investing in them and what are the pros and cons. Like if Tim Cook tomorrow leaves Apple, boy, it may be two days before I'm done. Unless he names a successor that has been with him for 10 years. And then once you find your winners, you got to put enough money into them in order for them to work in your favor. That's a valuable lesson. You know what? The the interesting part about that, and that's something you you learn, right? Like we originally had like seven different slogans on T-shirts. We saw the one that was working. All right, no need to invest in the other ones. This yep. is gonna be the, yep. this is gonna be the, the model going forward. I think the other thing is when they show us their portfolios, they'll say, "Look, I heard Ian say this, or I heard you, or I heard Rashad say this, but I found this other company that I'm looking into, and I want to put money in." It's trying to find the next thing when the first thing is here. Like I feel like when we look at portfolios, it'll be like, "Yo, this is this new marijuana company that I just heard about." That I'm like, "Well, all right, bro," but like this. There's this company over here that's actually profitable right now that you might want to look into, right? There's somebody that makes this phone that you're showing me on that you probably want to look into as well. And so trying to find the next thing a lot of times in their portfolio. So even like they'll put it, there'll be companies. I'm like, well, where'd you, well, how'd you even hear about this company? Right? Like trying to find the next thing to have that, that big like uptick and that payday, right? Everybody's looking for that next payday. So I'm just like, all right. We stress these things for a reason. We're stressing these companies for a reason. They're proven, they're productive, they're profitable. We went to, like, I personally told a story about Luke and Coffee, and Shai reminds me, and Ian always reminds me. And when I see traps sometimes, he's, he reminds me. I literally had to go through that to tell you that I did that so that nobody else hopefully would make that type of decision or mistake. Yeah. It happens, right? Like trying to, oh, it could be the next Starbucks. Oh, Every all the research in the world, nothing can tell you they, hey, they falsify documents. Oh, wait, that changes things. You see what I'm saying? So you left, you leave yourself susceptible to things like that when there's already a proven company in the space. You have to um hold good companies, even in bad times. You gotta hold good companies in bad times. So if you're invested in a company that is a strong company, if you're investing in a strong index, a strong ETF, and it's down right now, that just means that you just invested at the wrong time but don't sell the investment. You have to wait and don't get overly excited by days like today when the Dow Jones is up 600 points. It's a fight between bulls and bears. What happens is that it's just like, you know, a regular, you know, boxing match, right? Like 
you fighting, you fighting, and it's like a tug of war. But at mm-hmm. one point, one side is going to win. And, you know, you might have short term victories, but that doesn't necessarily mean you won the war. This is headed. This is headed south. I don't I don't know. I don't want to put my whole reputation on saying this, but it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. So it's not like one good day is going to change everything. It'll probably yeah. be red tomorrow. So don't get overly excited by, you know, yeah. a, a great day in the market because a bad day is coming um, and bad days are coming. But the good news is that it's almost impossible that you won't recover if you hold for a long period of time, if you're mm-hmm. in, if you're in good companies. Yeah. I think what the key, what you said is like eight months, fair market. On average. On average, like in eight months in the, the span of a lifetime or an investment, that's not a long time. And it, it, it rebounds usually the best after that. Mm-hmm. So just be prepared, but you got to, you got to wait. And also I want to say, and let them know, please write this down. Some of the most volatile upswings in the market, some of the best bullish days are during a down cycle in a recession. So tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, historically, are down days. Monday and Friday are up. You may get a 900-point day one day and be like, okay, this is the end of it, and then we're going to slide back down mm-hmm. violently. I've told you guys the levels like that 3,700 level where we may like dance around and then towards the end of the year go up. But as you said, please be careful thinking that just because one day, especially for those of you who are trading, if you don't know out of 100 trades how many you're going to win, stop trading until – October, November. Practice. You should have practiced 2020 and last year. Now is not the time to play. If you practice through this recession, though, when things stabilize and become easy, it's going to be like taking candy from a baby. But yeah, if you're investing in great companies, this is how you know. If you have to ask, is this company good? Will this company do well in a recession? Will it do good after a recession? It's not a good company. Let it go. Same when you're dating. Like, you know somebody good. If you have to ask your sister or your auntie, hey, what you think of? Ray Ray terrible. You know he terrible. Shout out to Ray Ray. Yeah. Either you're gonna stay. Yeah. yeah shout out to Ray Ray. Yeah. Like either you're gonna stay or not. But this is not the time to play. This is not going to be like 2020 where everything recovers really fast because the venture market is going down. The housing market next year is going to pop. Those prices are going to come down. Automotive prices are going to come back down. And we haven't even gotten to the megalodon of all debt, which is a student loan crisis, mm-hmm. which may hit in 24, 27. Red Panda, what's good? Red Panda, it's your boy. Going up. I know they can't stand it.